I am 10 billion percent sure that you want to hear about Dr. Stone, but why not slide over to my Twitch channel at twitch.tv slash iwearclothes, where I'm 10 billion percent sure you will find some cute new waifu emos to see. Oh, hi, yo, Sakai, good morning, whoa. With Dr. Stone's first season nicely wrapped up, I wanted to talk about it and science. That's what this show is about, just as much as its story and characters. And I'm not here to get scientifically scientific per se, but more so philosophically scientific. Dr. Stone takes both of these approaches to entertain the way it does, and in this video, I'm going to focus on the latter of the two. There are a few different ideological themes that this anime professes, but this one is the most obvious one to me, and I've been really hoping that eventually something in the anime medium would come along to deliver on that theme. Steins Gate carries it on some level, but not to the same degree that can be found here. Dr. Stone kicks it up a notch to really demonstrate the power that this idea is capable of as a main theme. I still remember when I got to see the show for the first time at the world premiere during Anime Expo 2019. It happened to be my first event at my first ever AX, and it was a beautiful experience. Promare was an even more amazing AX premiere that will live on fondly in my memory for the rest of my life, but we're not here for that, as great as the movie is. The man himself, Hiroyuki Imaishi, was even there. Anyway, science. Dr. Stone might seem like some kind of I fucking love science Facebook page, the anime, but it's much smarter than that and there's more to why the show centers itself around science the way it does. Something deeper. The show is adept at everything it sets out to do, and we'll talk about some of that as well, but what it cares about the most is sharing the joy and remarkable adoration that only science and few other passions can manage to evoke on such an impactful level. It's determined to highlight the enduring flames of passion that burn on and on for some people, and only a very deliberately written MC like Senku is capable of really selling that well enough. The way that this message is entrusted to Senku's character is amazing to me, and this level of trust comes from a deep passion by the person writing the character that's the only way it possibly could. Only someone with that same passion could understand. Ryichiro Inagaki, the mangaka behind Dr. Stone, definitely holds that same spark that makes the one we see inside of Senku so apparent. And it's not just inside of him that we see it. So much of the way he acts is intentionally set up to show that the Gnostic conviction he holds for science is always giving off a very emotional sense of appreciation to not just the other characters, but the audience as well. It's as if he's consciously aware that his foremost mission isn't to be the main character in a good story, but to put that message of how actually amazing science is on a pedestal for all to see, even beyond the fourth wall. He is one of the most resolute characters I have ever had the pleasure of watching, and the way that Dr. Stone shows us how dear to Senku's heart science really is deserves a standing ovation in my opinion. It doesn't just come from that sense of wonder though. Senku also firmly stands behind the almost universal philosophy among scientists that science is there as an instrument to be used for conquest and achievement. If something exists, it should be pursued until its full realization is complete. And science is the method. Space exists, so it's our duty to venture into it. That's among the most cliched examples I could have used, but science likes to be a little cliched. And it's because of this philosophical idea that Senku is so ardently opposed to Tsukasa and his desire for a world free of corrupt adults the untainted paradise where everyone is free. Everyone's own personal utopia is a dystopia for a lot of others, especially one like Sukasa's, but the reason Senku won't let him go along with his plan isn't as much out of a sense of morality, but that very same sense of duty. It does seem like a simple war of colliding values on the surface, and I'm sure Senku does also take up moral issue with the fact that Tsukasa literally wants to kill billions of people, but the true motivation is his unwavering allegiance to science. And he's not naive. He knows that beating Tsukasa in the stone world is a labor befitting of Heracles. It's the scrawny onion head virgin versus the uninhibited pillar man Chad, after all. I do think the whole genetically engineered and trained from the age of six super soldier thing that allows Tsukasa to pose this kind of threat is, of course, contrived. We still haven't gotten a reason for his unmatched physical prowess. I could talk for days about better routes the story could have taken in order to present its main conflict. But for me, something like that is so easily forgiven because of how on point the most important theme's execution seriously is. Fighting and actually defeating Tsukasa isn't just for the good of the world, it's also personal for Senku because Tsukasa getting his way goes against the progress and achievement that the scientific philosophy postures itself to arrive at. He has to save it not just because it's the right thing to do, but also because he doesn't want to let himself down in principle. 
And it doesn't take long for there to be others he can't let down too. It's bigger than just being personal. How specific the show gets with the on-screen explanations for what's going on is great, but look past what's on the surface and Dr. Stone really comes into its own as an unforgettable love letter to science and everything it stands for. This story is an obviously optimistic one despite the dismal circumstances the characters find themselves in. Of course, Senku and the Kingdom of Science are going to win in the end. Damn, if that didn't happen, I would cry. At first I was upset to see Taiju and Yuzuriha go, even if it was impermanent, but I adore all the new comrades Senku's garnered since. The sense of wonder that science provokes is Senku's secret weapon more so than any of the actual weapons he ends up creating. It's the most important tool in his arsenal to win everyone from Ishigami Village over to his side. Well, that and the fact that he ends up being the spiritual successor to the village's founder, who's also a great guy, I love Byakuya. Some of the characters like Asagiri and his cola and Momiji with her simplistic appreciation for small pleasures have to be won over with more shallow means to let the story retain an air of realism. But some of my favorite moments in the entire show are when people see the beauty of the gift of science for itself. Chrome, Suika, and even the village Sundere all become devout followers of Senku's revolution, and with fervor. Their lives have all been changed for the better so naturally and innocently that it's impossible not to see the value that science provides. The sorcery they so adamantly held a condescending attitude for at first is actually Pog Champ. You could sum this up by saying that it's just natural for people to like nice things, but I think there really is purpose there that is meant to be exemplified by the story. Their minds have been opened. It's probably fair to say that most people, at some point over the course of their childhoods or maybe even later in their lives, have been taken aback by and excited for science in some way for at least one of its many fields. Maybe it sounds weird, but it's not really something that can be explained perfectly. It's something that has to be experienced for yourself. And Senku embodies that in a nostalgically relatable way. If you grew up like me, then you were a lame nerd for being enthusiastic about science in school. But screw the haters, because science is cool. And that's far from being the only thing about Dr. Stone that I love. The setting, direction, and characters are all great. The world has been constructed in a way that complements the theme of the show without compromising the story details. The stone world is the perfect setting to explore the now untapped depth of scientific possibility. The comedic scenes and the gravely serious scenes never clash even when they end up entwined. It all just fits together without feeling forced or excessive. Chrome is one of my favorites because he's the best example of Senku's influence. His motivation and enthusiasm end up being the same as Senku's even before Rui's life-threatening situation comes to a close, but it did help that he already was a, uh, sorcerer by the time he and Senku met. Kohaku is just… whoa. And probably the most fun character to watch. She's always cheerful, bright, and optimistic about everything. Definitely best girl. Kinro and Ginro have a hilarious dynamic, and they play off of each other in a way that scales the more they interact. I even like Tsukasa. He's a little much, but any scene I see him in has this energy that commands my attention. The guy is a total badass. Even if the story creates that badassery artificially, Tsukasa owns it. His stupid goons are lovable too. And my favorite character in the whole show is Byakuya. His story and efforts and where they come to a slow crawl before capsizing and sinking are sad as hell, but in my opinion that's where the theme of the show is best represented. There is beauty in the sorrow. He does all that he can to save the world but ends up getting almost nowhere, which for any scientist has to be the most frustrating thing imaginable. But he is able to bet everything on the future and comes to terms with that. Perhaps better than anyone else in the show, Byakuya understands that the world not only can but will be saved because of the everlasting nature of the scientific philosophy. It isn't some blind faith that makes him so confident. Giving up, especially after achieving nothing, is worse than total defeat for someone like him and yet his unwavering trust and confidence that everything will be okay persists. The guy definitely earns more reverence from me than any of the other characters. His resolve to sit back and leave the rest to Senku is awe-inspiring, and Senku takes that resolve upon himself and adds it to his own. The mission he has been entrusted with is an impossibly burdensome one to the point that even someone as eager and passionate as him is affected by it. It's not just Byakuya and those around him in the now that are depending on him. It's also the people who gave up everything to let him stand where he does now. It's those people in the past, the people who will arrive in the future, and even though they don't know it, his present enemies too. It's a shame that this anime has to take a break for now, but I am so invested and compelled by this story that I may end up doing something I never do by just going and reading the manga. 
seriously, this is my manga list compared to my anime list, so I really mean it. Dr. Stone has me hooked. It took me a few episodes to see the real underlying theme, but as soon as I did, that's when I was hooked. And I've mentioned it a few times already, but the optimism displayed by the show makes me think that even for the bad guys, there will be a happy ending. All of them can be won over. And even if it really goes full survival of the fittest and important characters meet tragic endings, Dr. Stone will carry on its hopeful tone and continue to impress me. Science will win, and I'm going to be proudly looking on when it does. Hey, if you like the video, be sure to hit like, cause when you do that, the algorithm showers me in its blessings. Sub and hit the bell too, cause I'm supposed to say that. Do it for science, and give me $20. If you like Twitch streams, I'm a partner over there. You can find me streaming anime games like Fate Grand Order and Pokemon, so follow me there to catch the streams. Do the thing on Twitter and join my Discord server too, why not? Links for all these in the description. Thanks for watching the video, sayonara, and I'll see you again.